talking about the sling with uh, Steve O'Connor. Steve, how you doing? Good, thank you very much. Great. First of all, let's talk about, and I want to talk about this airplane because I, I, th this expo draws planes from all over. Where'd you start out from? Where'd you come from this week? Oh, we came from Michigan. We're up in uh, the thumb of Michigan. Oh, you're way up there. We're up there, yeah. So, uh, and this is an aircraft that is used for demo, for school, for what What do you guys do with this? This particular aircraft is. We right. use it as a demo airplane to sell the airplane itself, but we also, it's one of our trainers in our flight school up there in Michigan. We okay. do a lot of sport pilot training up there. All right. Uh, one of only maybe two or three in Michigan that do. Oh, wow. So, I mean, this this plane does not look like it's a trainer. So how many hours does it does it have on it? Right this now? airplane, we have almost 500 hours on it. We just got it last year Okay. in the summertime. But, um, and, and again, we, we do private pilot training in it as well. Okay. A lot of private pilots aren't afraid to. Right. Um, we have a, a 172 in, in the fleet as well. So we, we kind of bounce back and forth between so, them. So you got the new new. You got the sling right. here. And you got a... A 172 that may have been built in 1972. Yeah, it was an 84. So, okay. Yep. So what happens when these pilots jump from one to the other? It's really the the characteristics are very similar between the two, so it's not that big of a deal. But you know the sportiness of this plane, they actually draw to this plane. That's what I'm even thinking. A little bit. That's more what I'm than talking about. Is that, you know, do, do they get uh, like if there's both planes and the, and 172 is the one sitting on the ramp, they go. Yeah, you know, they get the grumpy face. Yeah, well, once we introduce them to this one, it, it kind of, you know, they, they're drawn to it. There's no doubt okay. about it. Okay, sure, sure. Which one do you start them in? I mean, which is their intro flight in? You know, it depends on what they're trying to do and what planes are available at the time, you know. Sure. If, if one's booked up, we might start them in the other one. But we try to push them towards this one okay. a little bit more. Okay, makes you sense. Know, I believe in uh, people like what they learn in, and if they learn in it, maybe they'll end up buying one. Who knows? Right, and you and you sell them as well as maintain them and train them. Correct, and, so and, and we the build them. And as you well. build them. Okay, right. and so yeah, you uh, you were saying off camera. I think you have a builder assist program. Yeah, we do. We are a uh, build center for the airplane factory uh, out of Torrance, California. And right. So we do some SLSAs for them, build assist. We just finished a build assist a couple months ago for a couple out of Tennessee. Okay. Uh, so they came in, they did for a few weeks and they helped us and uh, we got it done for them. So how long, you said a few weeks, right. about how long is that for? Well, I mean, they got to be involved in their 51%. So we had them out there for about two and a half weeks. Okay. And uh, we set up all the tasks for them ahead of time so they could come in and, and do their part and get in and get out. Because most people, it's about time. Well, that seems to be to the magic out. anymore is right. doing the tool layout, the right. part layout. And, okay, you do this, but it's all laid out. You don't it's have to dig around the to toolbox go. for exactly. it. Exactly. So, and and we, we assist them and give them guidance where they need it. But they learn a lot about the airplane, too. So Sure. Yeah. No, I think it'd be a, a fantastic way to learn. Right. So you, you're talking about amateur built. So that would be, I guess, an extreme. Right. All right. Somebody can come up and have you build it completely as an SLSA. Correct. And then I guess ELSA offers a almost whatever somebody wants in the center there. Exactly. And it, it keeps it in the light sport, but allows them to work on it by just taking their courses so that they can do their own maintenance, which is going to save a lot of cost as well for people. Sure. So. About how much do you typically do yourself on an ELSA or, and does a customer uh, well, do? Well, on the ELSAs, we can do, you know, pretty much all of it. Well, I realize yeah, that. I'm we, just wondering. We, and that's, that's what, what we do. do. It all okay. depends on the individual. Okay. You know, how much time they have. Right. If they want to spend time with us and do more of the work on it, we welcome them to do that. Okay. Uh, for people that just don't have that time, which, you know, that's a lot of people. That's right. Then we'll offer up as, as much or as little as they want. Okay. Very neat. So uh, tell us about the, well, when somebody comes up, they're going to be doing a metal airplane. Right. So that's, that's kind of, that's still got to have some romance to a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. And that's the thing is you still got the people that look at some of the other, you know, fabric airplanes and they think it's an ultralight. I, I mean, I disagree with that. I still like them. But right. You, you know, it's the perception and some people just like the metal airplanes. Sure. So, and this is definitely going to fit the bill for them. Are, are some of your amateur built guys, do they kind of say, do you have to kind of say, you'll be all right, we're going to hold your hand, it'll be, it'll work, or do they, are they already familiar? No, I mean, most of the ones we've done, they're pretty familiar, but you got a few that you really got to, to walk them through it. But most of the people, you know, they've been around airplanes, they know airplanes, okay. and Good. that we've dealt with anyway, so sure, they're sure. pretty comfortable with the idea. Right. They just don't quite know what to do or have the tools, so. Gotcha. You know, we're there to help. Oh, them. that makes sense too. Right. So I'm gonna guess Rotax. Yes, is this that, one is a Rotax. Okay. 912 IS on this one. All right. 
Oh, IS. Yes. Okay, nice. Yeah, it's a ULS IS. As a as an experimental build, we can also put the 914s on these. Oh, okay. Uh, on the two seaters. There's also a four seater version available for the airplane factory, the Sling Four. Right. And that one has the 914, and soon to have the 915 that's coming out. Oh. So they're redesigning right. the wings for that now. Very good. Very good. Um, so mm -hmm. like, yeah, they're busy. Busy oh, yeah. people. Absolutely. As far as interior goes, what can people expect as far as controls go, as far as uh, the, the, the um, well, interior, things like that? The interior, the fit and finish is, is unlike most that are out here. You know, a lot of the builds out here, you see them, they look like they're amateur built. They, you know, the fit and finish just isn't there. That's one of the things that attract people to this particular airplane is it has a real nice finish to it right mm -hmm. from the factory without doing much to it. So uh, controls, it's a stick. Okay. Uh, it's direct rods right to your controls, real okay. responsive, uh -huh. real nice feel. The seats are, are really comfortable, real nice leather padded, real nice. Oh, good. You know, they adjust and... Uh, okay, you got to tell me, because there's a, there's a cultural difference here. South Africa versus Michigan. They, they don't heat the seats, do they? No, no they I don't. knew they did. They don't. And I as a matter it. of fact, that's the one thing, again, they don't, they don't understand cold like that. right. I, so I, I we guessing. add our little touch to them okay. as far as heaters and stuff that really help that out a lot. And that's one thing, you know, we said we got to develop we gotta a little address bit better. this, yeah. But you don't know cold. but So yeah. we've addressed those situations, okay. and, and they're actually pretty good. So we've talked about the time it takes to actually build the, the, the experimental amateur mm -hmm. built kit. How long, you know, say somebody comes up to you today, all right, and says, I want one, okay? How long do they get to wait? Well, you know, that's a good question. It's gonna depend a lot on what stock is available. If they came to me right today, I have a quick build ready to go up do there. Do you, okay. Absolutely, so I mean, it would take us probably about two months from this point right now to get that one done and finished. Okay. If uh, I, from the time I get a kit to the time we have it ready, we're about three and a half to four months. Uh, finish time completely done. That's now that's if you do at. everything that's as an SLSA or ELSA. Correct. And even if as a build assist, if we can coordinate the time with them to get in to the shop and get their two weeks, two and a half weeks, and we can still get it done in that time frame. Okay. So that it's really not, it doesn't take that long. If they have the stock in California, then we can have those kits shipped to us within a week or two. And they okay. usually keep a pretty good stock. Okay. So if so somebody could learn theoretically to build and fly at the same time same facility sure get it absolutely. all done we can do the flight training we can help you build it so we can even maintain them later if, if they didn't want to do it for whatever reason right we, we, we're a rotax repair center uh we do ga so i mean we kind of do it all very good very good but uh but if somebody wanted to find you on the web how would they do that uh, our website it's midwestskysports.com Okay. Uh, plain and simple, and and we also have MidwestBuilds.com. That is the side of us that does the building. Okay. And then LapeerFlightTraining.com is our flight training side. Very good. If they and that has information specifically about the plane too. It or does. Is yeah. Okay. There's information there about the airplane, and they can always give us a call if they have any questions, and uh, we'd be more than happy to talk to anybody. Very good, Steve. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Thank you. This is Roy Beiswinger from Powered Sport Flying Magazine.
See right now the flaps are coming in now. See I put the last notch. And you see the airplane is nice and there you go, they float out. There we go. Gonna put it very easy. <laughs> we landed. Yeah. I wonder what that noise was. <laughs>